there's Sir Chonk in the background yelling at me. I'm going to try to be very brief in these You've because never been brief. this is my ranking of Stephen King books, but I haven't read that many of Stephen King's books. I read a bunch in like a few year period where I read like everything I could get my hands on of his. And then I just realized I was like not that big of a fan. Like I like him. He's fine, but I'm not like anywhere near as much of a fan. But Sir Chonk's video has been getting a lot of views and also comments and i have to be the one commenting i'm like i haven't read any of these books and i don't care about your his opinion and i have to try to like defend his opinions to all of you no, people ignore the comments you have to respond to the comments yes you're supposed to respond to the comments the rule of this. well i try to be engaging and but meanwhile people are like wine wine sir chonk said a thing and i'm like i don't even know i didn't read this book i don't know what he's talking about you could ask me about it you're busy or sleeping. When you get I'm home almost never sleeping. When you get home you're just like a lump of tired. I'm not sleeping. Though. Until like November, you will be a lump of tired. Well, I can still answer questions. I'm a lump of tired right now. Okay. Well anyway, so we're gonna go quickly through so I'm starting with they're gonna go in order of the books that I haven't read. So I'm just gonna tell you if I've if I've cause some of them I read part of. Part of when I was younger and then like either return them to the library because I didn't like them or just ran out of time Red or whatever. part of is you looked at the book jacket and dropped it on your foot once. You're like, no. I read part of that. No. All right, so the first two on here that I haven't read are The Stand and The Dead Zone. The Stand, I have not even attempted. It's too big. I have no interest. Everyone says it's good, but then it's, like, rushed, and so I'm just not that interested in spending a thousand pages on this story. Have you seen the TV show? Yes. I watched part of that TV movie they had in, like, the 90s, but I think oh, that was supposed to be bad. Moon. That was supposed to be bad, right? It was, like, not the worst. Oh, I didn't... It was a the... TV movie in the 90s. Yeah, was it I watched, be? like, the first few episodes, and then I was just, like, not even into the show, yeah, so... It, it wasn't complete crap. Didn't it was really right. want to watch, read the book if I didn't even like the show, well, the so... the show was about a million times worse than the book, so... Right. So you think I should read it? I mean, I don't know. I really like most of it. It's, like, really freaking long. Yeah, that's and, my like, problem. And, like, it doesn't need to be that long, but there's also a lot of awesome characters in it. So, Stephen King often writes too long. They just, it's, he writes, yeah, no, that's, he'll have like these meandering sure. things about like a table. He and writes, I'm like, I don't like, care he, about your table. He writes the same way you talk in YouTube videos. Yeah, that's he true. He just doesn't know how to edit. Anyway, The Dead Zone I, or The Dark Half, I read part of one of those, and it was the one where the guy like is in court. In court? Yeah, he's like on trial for something. Like, did he like murder somebody or something? I, I don't remember that well. I read both of those like a billion years ago. Dark half is like got ravens and stuff like portending doom or whatever. I don't and think there were ravens. The There's guy, a guy like in court. And then the dead zone is a guy who's got like oh, like a polit. He's like is he time travel? He try no. He's got like I think he's like the guy who like can mentally manipulate people a little bit. Like there's some kind of like political. I forget that book too. I remember I really liked the dead zone a lot. The dead zone might be the one I read started then because like that sounds more like it was like. Boring though, because it was like court, or he was like a mayor. Or, I don't know, some boring well, thing I didn't care mayor, about. But he, he, he like hates some political guy or something. I, I yeah, that might be the one I started, but I, I don't didn't, know. Why I can't remember it that well. But, but I didn't finish that, and I didn't. But anyway, so that's what I can never remember which one's the dark, dark half, half and which one's it. the dead zone. Um, I, like. I think I started the dead zone and then didn't finish it. I read them both like thirty freaking years ago, though. So. <laughs> Firestarter, I've never read. Everyone loved it when I was a kid, and you like that one. Yes, Firestarter is very good. I haven't and, seen the movie either. Uh, the movie's totally decent. If you want to see a young Drew Barrymore burden stuff. How about the new movie? I didn't see the. We didn't see the new one. You know, we didn't see the. New I one. know. I wanted to engage you in conversation so people would say, "What about the new movie?" But like, you know, we haven't seen it. So what are you, a, a talk show host, pretending you don't know the answer <laughs> to questions? <laughs> yes. Um, was Dead Zone a movie? I think it was, but I haven't seen it. Was he in court? There's no damn court that I remember. All right. Um, Cujo. Is, is there, there's a movie? There's I, don't I, haven't, know. I haven't seen Cujo, it. Cujo, was that a movie? That's a movie, yes. I haven't seen it, haven't read that. I haven't even touched it's that. It's really one. short. It's pretty fun. It's not amazing, but like, it's, you know, Castle Rocky and yeah, Evil but then, Doggy. And... I, don't, I don't believe in evil dogs. Dogs are sweet. People are evil. Some dogs are dicks. That dog is not a. I mean, that dog might be a dick, but I don't think dogs are dicks. All right, then the dark half I'm just putting together. I didn't put them in the order because, like, I'm not. I'm kind of want to read it because you love it so much, I and hate everyone. The dark half. Not the dark half. The dark tower thing. Oh, um, I hate half of that too. And like, but then you just like said it goes off the rails. So I'm like, do I want to invest all this time? Other people say it's great though. They're dumb though, because what you want to do is you want to read the first four books and just give up 
and then run away. You'll be inclined to not want to give up, but you should absolutely give up after the first four. I don't know. So I'll it see. completely falls apart. I just, I mean, this is a lot of time to invest, and I don't know if I want to. It gets so god awful stupid. It's unbelievable. Oh, then yeah, I can't wait to sign up and read eight books then. It's seven books. It's eight. The Wind in well, the Keyhole. Well, the Keyhole you can read separately. All right, different seasons. I don't know if I read that. That's the one with, like, the body and it's Shawshank, right? It's novellas. Yeah, it's Breathing Method, App Pupil. Okay, App Pupil, the I've seen and, the movie. Uh, Rita Haver's Shawshank And I've seen Redemption. Stand By Me, and I've seen Shawshank Redemption. And I didn't like App Pupil, the movie. I don't know what the Breathing Method is. I love Shawshank Redemption, which I know is nothing yeah, like the story. but the... the the story and like, the body. I read the I read the body because I loved Stand by Me, but it was like about nothing. I mean, it's all right. Like they go and like eat marrows and stuff. They like right. walk down a path. Yeah, it's not the worst story, but it's not that good. Shawshank is very little to do with the movie. Yeah, it's just people I despise, and I completely forget what even happened to the damn breathing. But I think somebody wasn't Ian McKellen in the app pupil yeah, movie. Yeah, but it's yeah. awful. But like otherwise, I didn't really like. You it. I do like Ian McKellen movie, though, because I saw that when, during the preview, like they try to act like the movie's action packed. If you watch the preview though, there's like four clips of a guy, of a kid riding his bicycle in the tunnel. And you're like, if all your action sequences are like some kid riding a bike in a tunnel, your movie is bad. <laughs> all right, Christine, I haven't read. I did try reading that. And I never could get past, like, the first, like, two, okay, like, 20 pages. I feel like the guy is, like, obnoxious in the beginning of it. And I was just like, I hate this guy. I don't care. Well, is that is that accurate? He's not a super likable protagonist. Is he, like, a super sexist jerk? No, he's just, like, a beat-down-by-life nerd who hates everyone. That's why you don't like him. Oh, maybe I would like it now. The problem is, like, <laughs> I don't want to, like, crap on the actor. Because, like, the actor's not bad in the movie. Yeah. But I just, for some reason, I don't like the actor at all. It's I not that he's even is. bad. I, the movie. I can't even his name. Just every movie I see him in, I just really don't like him. And, again, he isn't bad. I can't think of his name. But, anyway, he's the main guy in, in Christine. I don't like the movie that much. But I do really like the book. The book oh. is, is Yeah, I just remember... Way better than you expect for a book about I a mean, car. again, I was, like, I don't know, 14. And, like, mm -hmm. at four, 13, 14, I thought the character was obnoxious. And I don't remember why. Yeah, he's, like, bullied. I thought you'd like him. Yeah, so I probably would now. But, like, at the time, like, I just thought he was, like... I don't know. I thought he was kind of rude. He is kind of rude because he's shit on by everybody. Yeah, well, maybe I would like him. I mean, he's not a good person, but also you kind of get it because, like, he's kind of crapped on. I feel like he was, like, really sexist, though. Like, I thought I mean, he was... I don't, I mean, he's Stephen probably King's, talking about boobs. It's a book for, well, yeah, but Stephen King's all characters write about boobs, so he's probably sexist because Stephen King writes a lot of sexist characters because right. he's a little sexist. Yeah, I feel like he inadvertently is sexist and doesn't even know it. Yeah, um, he is sexist. <laughs> all right, so in the 80s. The Talisman and Black House, I have obviously have not read those. Should I read those? I mean, I love The Talisman. That's one of my absolute favorites. Those are at least only two books. Yeah, Black House I also liked. It's got some serious issues at the beginning and the end, yeah. but still very good and enjoyable. Well, maybe Talisman, I'll try those. Talisman's awesome. Cycle of the Werewolf we own, so I'll definitely try I mean, to check that out, because that's like 80 pages. That in like six minutes. Also, I like Bernie Wrightson. I think I legitimately read that book in 18 minutes when yeah, I was like 14. That's Bernie Wrightson, and I like yeah, his art, like, so. Yeah. Um, do you think he sucks? No, he said I like him. Oh, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> right. of course. Um, so that I'll probably read at some point. I just, you could have you read it quickly. I don't really like werewolf movies. stuff. Um, I mean, there's nothing to the book. There's like hardly any story. Well, you should watch is Silver Bullet, which is an awesome movie. So I've read about, no, I think, 40% no, no of commentary it. commentary on Silver Bullet, which is great. I'd have never seen that. Um, it, I read about 40%. Hold on. Silver Bullet's this kid in a wheelchair. You told me to be quick. Who has to deal with... Okay, go ahead. No, tell me about Silver Bullet. No, I don't care anymore. I guess it's good. It's a big like psycho werewolf. Loosely at uh, best. So like Shawshank? Or the yeah, body? Yeah, <laughs> All right. Um, it, I read about 40%, but I started it after... I started it after I watched the old TV movie, which I loved mm -hmm. when it came out. That was like, well, the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Loved it. Absolutely loved that miniseries. And now I've tried watching it, and it's kind of cheesy. But I really loved that miniseries. Um, and so I tried reading the book, and then I was like, this is basically the same as that miniseries, but long. So I never really... And then, like, the miniseries ended, and I was like, oh, this is kind of nonsense. There's, like, a big spider monster thing. And then I didn't like it. I didn't like the ending that much. And then all my friends had read the book and were like, it's basically the same. And I was like, well, I, and so now, and then now I've heard about like the whole like orgy. And I was like, I don't think this is for me. 
I mean, like, it's one scene. Yeah, it's awful, but anyway. <laughs> I mean, orgies with 12-year-olds is maybe not the, my thing. The miniseries one is, like, corny and, like, but it does a pretty good job but the new of ones are covering good. the main point. Yeah, the, the part one, which obviously in the book, the the younger part, the 1950s stuff, yeah. I think, is, like, way, way, like, they're both good. But that's, like, some of the best stuff Stephen King's ever Well, written. one of the things I think I didn't like about the new movies that I actually, and I get why they split them, but I liked the miniseries because I liked it going back and forth. You love when she goes back and forth. Well, like that, that, you can't get enough. And also, you're right. The younger parts are way better. So when you make the movie with the good stuff and then you have the like less interesting stuff happen, it's still good, but it's like way more interesting yeah, yeah. when it's like being altered with like some of their older stuff. I guess, because like, yeah, you're working the better stuff. But like, yeah, in my opinion, the... It the, just kind of felt like a crappy sequel. part the... of that, the Losers Club when they're younger, is yeah. maybe the best Stephen King stuff there is. I mean, there's definitely some interesting things when they're older, but I think, like, I liked how it was done in the miniseries better just because, like, I feel like it, chapter one and chapter two, felt too much like a sequel, ra rather than where the story... The book is... Oh, our food's here. Okay, we're back. Sorry. We had to get our food, and then several days have passed, but you didn't know that. Anyway, we were talking about it, and I think I was saying that the book alternates back and forth like the original miniseries did, and I think that that's a better structure, because I think in the new movie is it feels too much like a sequel, and then all the good stuff tends to be the younger years, right? Right, but you're repeating all the stuff you just said to them. Right, but so, I hadn't finalized that thought. Even it's been days for us, it seems to them like you said stuff, and you just said the exact same stuff. Okay, but... So let's move on from it. Finalize the thought. All right, so the next two, um, I haven't read, but I started. So I read yeah. Eyes of the Dragon. I read the first chapter or so when I was in, like, sixth grade. I got it through the Scholastic mm. Book Fair. Um... And I was excited because Stephen King was in the Scholastic Book Fair, and everyone liked Stephen King. And I, I don't think I'd even read him yet. Um, and so I was all excited. And then all I remember was, like, a lot of description of some boobs. And I was like, I don't think this book is for me. And so I, had, I could, kept trying to read it, and I was, like, not remotely interested. But I do remember there being boobs. I mean, there's boobs in every single book. There's a girl walking by Stephen King, and I talk about her boobs. But it's probably uh, not that big of a deal, but in sixth being, grade it was. <laughs> I don't remember it being a very boob centric book, but who knows? Um, I liked it. It's fantasy. You don't like fantasy, especially like kind of derpy fantasy, I guess, because it's like you know not the best fantasy you've ever read. But I still really like the book a lot. It's fun. It's got a little bit of Zack Tower stuff in it too, which is fun. And apparently some boobs. Yeah, apparently there was boobs. Um, and then I started Misery. Never really got into it. Watched part of the movie. Didn't like that either. And then everyone's like, you would love Misery. And, like, Misery really seems like it's up my alley. Like, it's not monsters. It's just about people being awful to each other. And I think the characters are kind of all unlikable, which is generally my thing. Um, do you think I'd like it? I don't know. It's basically just two characters. Yeah, it's my one's favorite thing. One's stuck in a bed for, like, 96% of the book. No, that's and my one's favorite a bit kind of, of book. Like, a bit of a psycho fan. I really like that. I read it in a day. Yeah, but really is, is he, like... A awesome guy or is he kind of a I mean, schmuck too? I don't remember him being like a jerk or anything. Like it's I not mean, like Stephen King working out some like no, weird fantasy I mean, he, he has. he may be like very slightly arrogant I guess. I don't really remember him being arrogant. I, feel like but he was I, I read this like cool. 30 years ago. Yeah. So but I gotta I don't read remember that. disliking the Paul Sheldon. I, I think he was fine. I feel like he was fine. It's more about how like obsessive a fan got. Mm. I don't know. I think it's interesting. I'll probably check that one out at some point. We have that? Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think we yeah, own it. That's probably why it. I haven't read it. Yeah. All right, so the next one I definitely started reading. I took out of the library, I think, probably 20 times when I was a kid. And I never got past, like, Chapter 8, I don't think. And it was the Tommyknockers. Oh, that book's awful. And everyone hates it, <laughs> so I don't feel like I really missed out. So I'm not going to go back to that one. Yeah, it's really long and really boring, and he did I think extra cocaine during that book. But we own it. Yeah, but we shouldn't. No one should. <laughs> and then there's the dark half, and we talked about that earlier with yeah. like the dark half versus the other one. Dark yeah. side or whatever. Dark tower? No. Dream side, dark side, different side. Dead zone? Dead zone, that one. Yeah. That's neither dark nor half or side. <laughs> Oh, no. you know, All right, I don't know if I read Nightmares and Dreamscape, so I put this on my didn't read. 
What's in it? Um, that one's somewhat forgettable. There's the Night Flyer, which is like this monster guy chasing a dude who like flies a plane around. That, that one Wait, is that of, the movie? It's a crappy movie. But I kind of like the story. Um, I think that's the has um, a really cool sort of biographical. I don't know biographical. It's he like covers his son's like baseball playoff run. Mm-hmm. It's like really really interesting. It's pretty good. If you like baseball at all, that was really a good one. Um, something about a Cadillac. There's like a detective story in there. Yeah, it's, I don't, it's, I don't think I read bad. that one. There's nothing like amazing in it, but it's totally solid. Um, from a Buick Eight, I uh, didn't read, and a lot of people say that's oh like one of his God. darkest, most depressing books. I think. Yeah, that's the book I read of his that I hate the most. Oh, really? It's so garbage. It doesn't do anything. Like, I hate when people give reviews of books and just say it's boring, but damn, this book is boring as hell. Oh, so maybe it's right up, right up my alley, because I like books where, like, nothing happens. It's just a bunch of cops sitting around bitching and being like, what a weird car we have. This is like, uh, I don't remember if there's an alternate dimension in the I trunk thought it was just about, something. like, people who are, like, depressed and, like, dealing with grief. No. That's what it says. Yeah, but that's because people like to pretend it's about something it's not. Cause, like, it can't just be about this. That'd be too crappy of a book. Haven't we already covered your feelings on these books? These are well, the, you didn't even read the book. These are the books I'm just telling Why you I haven't you, read, and I'm asking if I should read them. So you're bringing up books that you haven't read to discuss. I'm asking if I should read them. And then you're annoyed that I'm telling you books about it because I read it. <laughs> well, we have very Why different... am I here, and why does this I video want... even exist? I don't... I'm sure opinion. I'm just I'm like he's are twenty random books out of the uh, Barnes and Noble I never read. Listen, the potato stopper. I want your. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> Seems a little starchy. I want your opinion, but we have very different tastes. You have yes, to. My you have to turn off your, your taste, and you have to think about my taste and see if I would like well, let's it. Let's see. It's boring and stupid. Yes, you probably would enjoy. Okay, it. so I should read from a beer game. Yeah. All right. You'll love it. It's garbage. The Colorado Kid I haven't read, and I haven't read oh, Cell. Oh, God. Neither of those These interest like me. These are some of the worst books he has. These are among the absolute, like, five to eight worst books. Cell it strikes me as Stephen King capitalizing on the, like, that moment of Japanese horror that was really popular. Because yeah. remember when, like, it was, that was, like, a thing? Everything was, like, it was yeah. Japanese horror, and it was always, like, a possessed phone or a possessed TV or a possessed videotape or some yes, possessed technology. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he jumped in on that, like... Well, this is classic Throw. Stephen King. Oh, look. He has a reasonable yeah. idea, has no plans, just starts typing, and then just doesn't know where he's going and rambles. Yep. Hello. And he says, make room for me. Mm-hmm. All right, so we I haven't read Lacey's story, and you, neither of you. I haven't read that either. But we do have the cool cover yeah. where it comes off, and it's got like a pretty garden underneath. Great, pretty garden. Um, Have you read Blaze? Yep. How come it's a picture of snow? I don't know. It just that doesn't make sense to me. All right, would I like Blaze? I hated it. Okay, it so like I him, would like it. It was like him attempting to do a character that's non-traditional, but like it's Stephen King, so he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, and it comes across. Is as, there a as monster? Pandering and awful. I mean, not really. So I'd probably like it. Uh, I can't do, imagine you would. Do McKee, everyone likes you didn't. Right. But you haven't done a review yet. Oh yeah, yeah you I kind did. did. You haven't updated. Painting, 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 pirate ghost. There okay. you go. Under the dome. I saw part of that TV show, and it was dumb. The TV show has nothing to do with the book. There's okay. no connection at all, except for a few character names, I guess the town where it's located. Like, the storylines are not anything like you're in the book. So, 112263, I used to be interested in it because I thought it was going to be about JFK, but you said he's not really part of the book. I mean, it's more about stopping the assassination, but even that's only like a small part of the book. Yeah, well, it's he mostly does, about him dating this girl and being a teacher. In the late 50s, early 60s. That sounds fun. That's the book. So it's like his, his And then he's like, oh, that's right. I'm here to stop this assassination. I'll do something about that once every 250 pages. <laughs> and then Joyland, I'm disappointed you uh-huh. didn't like because I was so excited to read that. Well, you should read it then. I love amusement park horror. Yeah, go for it. You said it's dumb. Yep, it doesn't mean you wouldn't like it. Other people think, like it. Think but... of all the discussions of boobs that there are. <laughs> Dr. Sleep Neither has, 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 has read. Mm-hmm. I want to read that because I like The Shining a lot. Yep. All right. Revival seems kind of like something I would like. But... You might like that one. A lot of people like that one. It's just, it was, that one I didn't think it was bad. It's just, it wasn't for me. I just didn't really care about the storyline or the characters. It says it's Vintage King. Is there a monster? I mean, there's like some supernatural elements. No, there's I like, don't like there's that. Like a, there's not like a chomp chomp monster. 
I don't like the supernatural it's more, stuff. It's a little more Lovecraftian being... than Monster. Oh, so maybe I would like it. And then the Mr. Mercedes, that's a detective series, it's right? Most Mysteries? Of it. it gets like, they, he adds some supernatural crap in the third one, which is kind of stupid. Because that's end of watch. But otherwise, if you can deal with an over-the-top Mary Sue and some racism, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty uh. good book. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll wait for the movies. And then I didn't read any of the Gwendy stuff. Oh, I like the Wait, is Gwendy a guy? No. Well, who's the guy on all these pictures? Well, this is probably like the creepy fucker who gives her the box. I don't think you're supposed to say that on YouTube. Oh. I mean, <laughs> that is the gentleman who <laughs> delivers into her the box. Oh. All right, Sleeping Beauties, you haven't read. We don't have. And The oh, Outsider, no. you haven't read. No. Uh, we don't have either of those. It's um, sort of a TV show. It was, yeah, I like, awesome I like the first 60% of The Outsider show yeah. a lot. Like, I was really... I loved the characters. Yeah. I loved the actress to yeah, begin with. Like, the apart. cast was really good. And then, like... And then it became about, like, some kind of, like, hill people living in, like, a cave or something. Yeah. Okay, it was one hill guy in a cave. But it was, like, some supernatural creature that had lived in a cave for, like, 500 years and was, like, turning into people and shape-shifting yeah. or something. That it was from, so dumb. That went from interesting to stupid, like, so fast. Yeah, see, this is my problem with Stephen King. Is yeah, like, he does it a lot. I like a lot of the concepts of his books, like Small Town, Actually, Weird. If he didn't write Supernatural, he'd probably be an even better writer. Well, I mean, he might not be as famous, I guess. Right, but, like, I think that's the thing with, like, The Outsider. Is like, there obviously was a supernatural element yeah. to begin with, but I thought it was too supernatural, and I would have preferred none of that. Mm -hmm. Elevation, I haven't read. That's the one you said is about, like, a guy playing the guitar? Or that was that's Revival? That's Revival. Elevation is just, like, reverse thinner. Guy oh. just gets lighter and lighter and lighter, and that's the entire story. Oh, well, it, guess, You read it, like, 16 minutes. It's um, well, it's short, so I guess I could mm -hmm. read it. And The Institute, I actually do want to read. Oh, I like that one. That's, like... The school for gifted students. So it's X Men. Yeah, it's like oh. evil X Men or New Mutants. Oh well, I didn't realize it was about like special kids. I thought it was just about like a creepy asylum. No, no, oh. they get powers and stuff. And then if it bleeds, you don't have Billy Summers. That's when you read oh, that there's a lot of boobs. I, I, well, I liked it. Oh no, it's racist. But some of it's so wildly implausible. Oh. And like that's one where like he's the CIA only, guy, he, right? Military guy. Yeah, was, he's like it's pretty cliche. And there's a whole, like, second ending that just you don't need. Uh, the book's, like, clearly done. And he's like, what about another hundred pages of this? And you're like, what? <laughs> and then later you said nothing happened. Oh, that's, like, crappy six cents. Oh, okay. Um, and then fairy tale I wanted to read. Does that dog die? No, I told you in my review it does not die. Okay, well, if the dog died... I that part of the story is great. The thing is, once the dog storyline gets completed, you might as well just toss the book out the window because there's no need to keep reading. I mean, there's a cute dog on the cover, so if the dog yeah. dies, I ain't reading And the dog book. is very cool, and the dog storylines are really good. And even, like, the story before the fairy tale parts are also really good. Yeah, I kind of want to read just that. Just the but... fairy tale parts are bland, generic, and crappy. <laughs> but, like, you're still interested while the dog parts are happening, but again, once the dog thing finishes, you should just stop reading the book. So how, so I put these in the order, I found a blog that like listed like the entire, like in publication order. Yeah. So the last two, one is Holly, which just came out. Yeah. Um, so obviously we haven't read that yet. And then Skeleton Crew, because they didn't list it, I don't think, or I missed it. It came out in like 82 I know. or something. I, well, I know like that. that came out a long time ago, but, so I don't know if I've read Skeleton Crew. I think I did. Yeah, I think I borrowed Skeleton that from Crew you. Skeleton the Mist. And like, oh, yeah, I, I read think that. The Mangler is in that one. Oh, yeah, I didn't really like many and, of those stories. And The Jaunt, I think, is in that one. There's a What's lot the of really Jaunt? I think I liked The Jaunt. That's the one where you have to teleport, but you have to close your eyes, and he doesn't close his eyes. It's like science from, fiction. And he goes insane. Yeah, like, I feel like. I feel like that's a, I always thought that was Bradbury. I think I'm confused about yeah. Bradbury. Well, it's very Bradbury like. It's probably why I like it. So, and now, in order of the ones I have read, I put first Carrie because I always feel like I've read it, but I don't think I ever finished the book. I mean, it's really short. I've read a lot of the book. Pages. So I'm like, but I'm pretty sure I never actually finished it. But I've seen the movies multiple times, both of the movies. I mean, and that's, I, a, that's the one I read in a day. Like, I do feel like I read it. In but terms then, of writing, it's probably his best written book. And like, maybe I have read it, or but I feel like I never finished it. So I don't know why I, I feel mean, like that. I mean, that's a pretty awesome ending. Yeah, so I don't know if, I, like, I don't think I ever finished the book. And I don't know why. Okay. It was more of just like a matter of like I was reading it and then something happened and then I just forgot. Gotcha. And then I think I, because I'd seen both movies, I just like was not in an urgent rush to get back mm -hmm. to reading it. And I enjoyed the book that I did read. I like, because I, I think I got to like her, 
like acknowledging the powers so like i got through the bullying scenes and stuff Mm -hmm. which i liked because obviously i thought they were relevant um but yeah so i put it at the bottom just because i don't know if i can count it as red because i don't really think i finished it but i don't really remember and then my next one on my my rankings so at the bottom so i guess the bottom of the ones that i definitely have read was everything's eventual and i part of it's just because i don't remember anything about that book yeah, isn't that the one where, like, the father convinces the son to kill the wife or something like that? The short, 14 like a, stories. They bury her like a field or something? That sounds familiar. And that isn't one, there one, one in the truck? There's one in, like, a morgue where, like, the bodies come back to life or I something. Like there's, like, hundreds of those. Yeah, I can't remember everything's eventual that well either. But yeah. The one I seem to remember, I think, is the one where, like, the dad convinces the son to kill his wife. But I definitely read this, and I just don't remember anything about it. So that's why it's at the bottom, because yeah. I don't remember any of the stories. Mm-hmm. So none of them stood out. And so, and I mean, you know, sometimes that happens. That's why I don't read a lot of short story collections, because I do think, like, it's very hard for a short story to have an impact that you remember, like, ten minutes after you finish the book. Right. And mm-hmm. so you can generally remember a short story collection long enough to talk about it and then you're like, wait, I don't remember any of these stories. Um so yeah, that's at the bottom of my list just because I don't really remember. So I'm sure there was something that I liked, but um and then the well, one I remember that is at the bottom of my rankings is Dreamcatcher because I just thought it was nonsense. It was kinda like a bad cabin fever and ba- cabin fever is bad. Yeah, like I just remember, awful. like don't they just get like a parasite and all die? Sorry, it's, spoiler. It's like a fifty-page stretch, and they just all crap their pants. It's like and there's like an alien. This is really not the best way to intro a story. Like people just like taking a dump. Yeah, they're all sick, pages. and there's like aliens or something. Yeah, right? that one guy gets like captured by the military because they're trying to figure out what's up with the alien. Then there's like this big chase. It's like it's awful. Yeah, I hate the I, movie. I hate the book. I I hate it. I think I liked the movie oh better. Oh my god, the movie's so bad. But maybe I liked the book better. I remember they were different enough. But I didn't like either of them, so... Oh, doesn't he have, like... But isn't Jason Lee in it? A disabled character in the Oh, book. probably. And of course, it's written in the most, like, old man way. It's, like, so awful. White, like, totally, like, well, neurotypical. It's just that he's, like, so Well, he's old. also racist. Well, yeah, but he's <laughs> accidentally racist. Like, he He's wants... also accidentally, like... Everything. Yeah, like, well, he writes he, he sexist, and I don't think he is a sexist. Yeah, he doesn't want to be. So, like, he's like, I'll have equality, and I'll put non-traditional characters in my books, but then he'll write them all in these borderline offensive ways. He, like, well, yeah. he's trying. And he's it's like, like, you want to, like, pat him on the hand, like, nice try, Grandpa. Like, he wants to be like, oh, I want to have an autistic character, because I think, like, it's nice to show yeah, neurodivergent like, characters. But then his awful cliches. It's like he basically, yeah, just took, like, a stereotype of autistic people, and I was like, oh, I don't yeah, he know. He does that a lot. Because he's like, also with Holly On a one end, you're like, he's trying, but also, like, maybe don't try when you're kind of, like, like ignorant. A lot of, like, the descriptions of Holly that, like, I haven't actually read any of the oh, books with her, but the way you described yeah. her. And, like, I loved her in the TV show, The Outsider. Mm-hmm. I thought she her character was so cool. And so, like, I'm kind of curious to read Holly because I really, really like I it. loved her in the show, but then I'm also, like, maybe it's just because, like, the writers of the show yeah. and Cynthia, well, Cynthia Arrivo, I think, played yeah. her, right? Oh. Like, I just think maybe they just, like said we're gonna tweak this a bit yeah it's just really bad in the, uh, but in like the he movie. loved that character like king says that's his favorite character he's ever written yeah but he's stupid he's, he just wrote a person who's like completely helpless and can't do anything and then instantaneously becomes an all-powerful mary sue right and you're like what are you doing right and like, then apparently people like her because she's awesome in the show they made her like i guess she has some character traits that people can relate to and then they also made her like essentially like superhuman Without actual power. Yeah, well, I liked and her, so like... And like, hey, I relate to that person, and she's basically perfect in every way. Well, I thought she was really cool in the show, because she is, like, she is anxious and, like, socially awkward, but then also, like, smart, and I thought that was, like, really cool, like, yeah. just kind of unique it's, character, I mean, but... I don't know, maybe it'll be better in the other books, or maybe it's better in The Outsider, but in this Mercedes trilogy, it's awful. All right, anyway, and then, so the next one I have on the list that I read was Fiddler. I didn't mind Fiddler, like, I didn't, I don't... What's funny is that, like, you're the one who reads all the Stephen King, and, like, I've only read, like, a small portion of his books, and I don't really dislike the books I've read, I just don't love them, and I just, so, like, I've never loved Stephen King to a level I think, like, you and some of the, like, super, like, diehard Stephen King fans have, and I, but I've never really, like, 
hated his books either. I just kind of am like, eh. But yeah, like, Thinner's very meh. It's fine. And that's how Thinner was for me. Like, I liked it. I didn't dislike Thinner. I just was sort of like, it was fine. I feel like it's a short story that goes on. It's not that long anyway. It's only like 220 yeah. pages or whatever. But like, it's, it's a short story that goes on too long. It's a pretty cool idea. The ending's not bad, but like, it doesn't really... Yeah, so of, that's my second to last. Because, again, like, I didn't love it, but I... I thought it was fine. Like, I didn't mind reading it. Nothing bothered me about it. I just it kind of read it and was like, good, done. Um, so the next one is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. And the reason I actually have that is, like, not the worst is, like, nothing actually happens in this book. But I actually enjoyed reading it. Like, I I mean, it's not long. So it's that's part of the thing. Is like, I was like, oh, look, a Stephen King book. It's about 500 pages. So it doesn't unnecessarily drag But, like, nothing actually happens. It's just, like, a girl hanging out listening to, like, the baseball game. And, like, that's kind of fun. But I don't really remember if there was, like, an actual plot. Did anything ever happen in the book? Yeah, she gets lost in the woods. And part of the lost in the woods stuff... I like survival stories in the woods. Yeah, like, I just... That was just fun. That I like. And she listens to... EEI like all the time. Yeah. And like it's so that's fine except like Stephen King obviously hates them because he like dumps all over him like constantly I'm like why why have a character that listens to it nonstop but also hates it? Because all the time? you used to listen to it every day on the ride to work and complain well, about I guess it that's all the true. time. That's because there was no sports radio options and now there are and I don't listen to it anymore because there's more. But they anyways. did she didn't have satellite radio. She had an but, old Walkman. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and then like there's sort of supernatural monstery guy starts spying on her and stuff and it gets kind of dumb. Yeah, I don't remember that because I think I blocked that part out because I was like, all I remember yeah, of the it's, book it's is right about a girl her. walking in the woods and nothing happening. Yeah, and even that's like only okay, but it's fine and then it gets kind of dumb. Yeah, so I don't think... I think Tom Gordon's not even that good of a player. He's a pitcher, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he, had like, he had like one really good year as a closer and then he's like mediocre. Yeah, I don't remember the supernatural stuff, so I enjoyed the wood stuff. We tried to throw an Ephus pitch, which is like the dumbest pitch of all. Anyway. The, no, that was, that was the Fosh ball. Next on that my... Was a and again, idea. I'm going from worst to best. So next on my list, and I liked this book, but it was way too long, was Insomnia. Um, and I guess it's tied to Dark Tower, which I didn't know, but like, I don't yeah, know. It's a whole have... setup just for like the kid to be a crucial cog in the dark tower and like it's like 800 pages to basically get to like one idea and it's like i don't know if we needed all this just to get to this it was a pretty like the mood of the book was good it was just very very long and so at one point i cure for insomnia i remember reading it thinking i feel like i'm just like this is going in circles it's like the same thing yeah he didn't know where he was going so i think the problem is when he doesn't know where he's going he just keeps typing, which I think is a good writing technique. But then you're supposed to go back and edit out the stuff, but he doesn't do that. All right, well, he just leaves it all in there. I mean, I definitely enjoyed the book. I just thought it was too long. Um, yeah. And then Gerald's Game. My problem with Gerald's yeah. Game is Gerald's Game was good, but like the concept was good. But then I had this whole ending worked out and this whole theory of the book. And I was, like, really into, like, my version of what was going on. And then it turned into, like, like, and I don't want to give too many spoilers, but, like, before she gets off out of the handcuffs, um, she sees this, like, creature, like, lurking in the dark and not in the side of the corner of the room. And I was like, oh, she's driving herself insane and it's isolation. And because I love that kind of horror, like that sort of metaphorical, I love, like, um, so you forgot who you were reading. Yeah, and then, <laughs> so I was all that. excited because then she kept seeing this creature like later on in the book, and I was uh-huh. like, she's made herself crazy. She never got out of this. It's all in her head, and right. and I was really into it. And then there was like actually like some troll guy, and I was like, this is dumb. Yeah, and so, and, and how does the troll guy know she's gonna get cast stuck to her? Bed yeah, I just like the troll guy thing. Just I mean, and again, I know like. I get, I got, we get all these comments on the videos, and I have to usually respond. And I'm like, I don't know anything about Stephen King, so you're correcting the wrong person. But like, I read this book a long time ago, so I know it's not an actual troll guy, and like, there's probably some other. But look, I don't care. The point is, I had an idea of where the book was going. I really liked where the book was going, and then it didn't go there, and I got disappointed. So, I don't hate the book, but I just it it didn't go where I wanted it to go. So the next is and this is kind of these three are all like sort of the same group um the next one was rose matter which i think is a really cool concept and like actually nothing's wrong with the book i just it was just fine like 
the concept was really neat. I just feel like it wasn't as good as the as the concept could have been, but it wasn't bad either. Right? Yeah, I think that was one that I read after I hadn't read Stephen King books for a couple yeah. of years, and I was just like, this is not the one to get back into with it. Yeah, it's I fine. Just, I just had trouble getting into it. Um, it's a decent yeah. concept. Like, I like the concept of, like, the painting and stuff, but, like, I just, I mean, it, you know, it wasn't, like, mind-blowing either. And then Dolores Claiborne, I, like, what's kind of weird about Dolores Claiborne is this is not a Stephen King book, except for the fact that it's set in a small town. But, like, I don't think there's supernatural elements, are there? I don't remember there being any. It's like a murder in a, in a an eclipse. And so, like, I, I, I don't yeah, know. I, I actually feel like I should have liked this more, but I just, another one, like... Maybe I'm remember not... Like maybe movie. I'm forgetting all the supernatural stuff, but, like, because, like, I do that, because sometimes I just write those parts off because I don't like them. Yeah. Um, but I did really like Dolores Claiborne. I thought that was pretty good. I um, thought it was pretty decent, but like, it's another book that, like, I don't have ranked super high because I just, I don't remember that much of it. Yeah, I mean, it was fine. And then I have Green Mile, which I really, really like. Um, I actually, this is a super, one where I think the movie might be a little bit better. And I was worried yeah. that they weren't going to be able to, like, pull it off, but I thought the movie was pretty solid. Maybe it's just because Tom Hanks is in it, though. I don't know. I think they're both okay. Maybe you need more Mr. Jangles. Yeah, that is true. Isn't it Bojangles or is it Mr. Jangles? I think it's Mr. Jangles. Oh. Mouse. Um, all right, and then Bag of Bones I love, but I don't remember it anymore. I just know it's like a ghost story, and I enjoyed that a lot. So that's one of my favorites. I think that's the only one you've read that I haven't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, so that's one of my favorites, but I have it here because, like, I couldn't tell you why I liked it anymore. Well, there's this bag. I just remember it was creepy, and it was, like, a ghost story. And so, like, I don't mind Supernatural a lot of times if it's, like, ghost stories, because those are, like, kind of just on the edge of the Supernatural I can buy into. Um, and then I have, and so my top, hold on, one, two, three. Top eight, so eight is Salem's Lot. Um, I really love Salem's Lot, like for mood, um, the characters. It's really well written. I just, I'm part of it. Like honestly, it's kind of slipped down because I'm so vampired out at this point, and I really like vampires. And Salem's Lot's one of the few books that's like actually a good vampire book. Um, like they've just obviously vampires have gotten really ridiculous over yeah. the over it's the years. Like probably my favorite one and i read it back before vampires were crazed right so it wasn't over drunk overdone to me yeah and the thing is like this is so well written great characters really surprising amazing mood i think just like the only reason it's eight is because out of all the ones left this is the plot that least appealed to me yeah. like it was just about vampires and so like it was fine but out of all the remaining books like this is the one that i think just normally, like, normally a book like this would probably be lower, and I think it says a lot about Stephen King that, like, it's this high because, like, part of the reason it's this high is just because it's really well written and really well, like, w really good character development. So, even though the plot doesn't interest me that much, I'm just really into the, like, the setting and the mood and the characters. Um, so the next one's two, and it's The Regulators in Desperation. And I, and I guess everyone says, like, whatever one you read first is the one you're going to like more. Um, I like The Regulators more. Um, partially, I think that's more likely, though, for me, even if I had read Desperation first. Desperation's more like a Western, like, there's supernatural elements, it's like survivalist. The Regulators is just about, like, a town and all this weird stuff going down in this creepy town. And I'm big on creepy towns. So... I like The Regulators a lot. Everyone thinks it's silly. I loved it. I thought it was, like, weird and... I mean, I guess it's supernatural, but it's, like, not <laughs> in a weird way. Um, but, like, I like Salem's Lot better than Desperation, but I just put them together because they're obviously together. Which one did you like better? Regulators. Oh, okay. So you also like Regulators. Did you read that one first? Yep. There you go. Um, and then for number five, it's Night Shift. Um, and that's just because, like, there's plenty of bad stories in this, but it also has, I mean, two of the absolute best short stories 
Stephen King has written. And like I said, short stories don't stick with me. And two of the stories in here, one is the scariest story I have ever read in my life. And that's Boogeyman, which I haven't seen the movie version yet. I don't know how they could turn this, like, story into a movie that makes any sense. Because, like... I would think you do it with Lawnmower Man and Turn of the Corn. They don't care. Well, right. But, like, this is, like, it's so scary for, like nothing happening that's partly why it's scary um so i just like i'm like it's got it's a totally different concept i mean obviously they're just gonna have like something creepy in your closet and that's like gonna be the the premise of the movie um but i really loved that story and i i used to reread it because it was the last page of that story scared the hell out of me literally every time i'd get to it i would get chills and so I'm like, okay, that's how you tell a story. You tell a story when, like, 30 years after I read it, I still remember, like, viscerally reading the last page of the story. That's a good short story. That sticks with you. Yeah. And then also Strawberry Spring is in here, and that's one of my favorite short stories of all time. Definitely recognize, like, I can remember that one. So that's why it's up here, because it's, like, a two of the stories that have just, like, I have never forgotten over decades you know, so. Yeah, those two are both awesome. I think Mangler is in there. And yeah, think, that one's pretty I think good. Beach World is in there. Those are both really good. Yeah, like, I remember enjoying most of the stories in it. There were some I didn't like, but but I think, like, when you can remember that many of the stories, and then there's, like, that many, the two that affect yeah, you that I've, much. I've taught Strawberry Spring in class, like, a bunch of times. Yeah, that's so such a like, great, yeah. unreliable narrator mm-hmm. story. Um, All right, so the next one's Bachman Books, and that's partially because... Two of these are fantastic. One I don't think I liked at all, which was road work. Yeah, that's right. I don't think anything happens. They just like do yeah, road the work. Yeah, the guy like is upset that they're like doing work outside his like apartment or his house, so he starts like trying to like fight them or something. And then Running Man, I think was okay. That was kind of fun. But I and I I wrote something about this on Goodreads, but like I really liked Rage, and obviously I read Rage when I was like in college and so it was before you know like school shootings were like a weekly occurrence um and so obviously I totally understand why Stephen King felt like he wanted the book taken uh, out of publication because he just felt like there was stuff going on that like he didn't want to be associated with and and I appreciate that but I also think it's nonsense to blame books I mean, yeah, some crazy person read it and, like, wanted to, like, kill everybody in his school and he blamed the book. Okay, but you know what? Like, people have been doing that since Shakespeare's time. Like, you're crazy. It has nothing to do with the book. Like, like, yeah, it's not great to be, like, justifying writing about school violence. But at the same time, like, I think there's something to be said for, like, stories that people have, like, an outlet for their, like, well, for their rage, essentially. And, you know, um, Stephen King had been teaching, and he was writing it, right, from his perspective, like, as a student in the past. And and I just think there's, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with writing a story that can be, like, disturbing. Um, I just think, you know, obviously right now is not the time people want to be reading about it, so I get it, but... I just think, you know, people are like, oh, this is sick and twisted and it should never have been written. I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> you know, like, if you don't want to read it, don't read it. Um, but, you know, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was really well written. I thought it did a really good job of, like, putting you in the mindset of someone who obviously is unstable. Um, you said you haven't reread it and you wonder if you'd enjoy it now. Yeah. Um, I think one of the issues is, like, like I said in my other thing, it's like a lot of the students like start begins like be a fan of the shooter. Yeah, they and glorify so that's him. A little bit weird. And it's also a big ad for locks. For high quality locks. <laughs> for your lockers. Or the I want to say it's Tybalt. That's probably not the right word. I'm getting confused with Roman Juliet. <laughs> Whatever the name of the lock is, it's a yeah. crucial part of the story. Um, but yeah, like so again, I remember reading it at the time and I I mean I know it's controversial, but I thought it was well written, and I thought, you know, again, I always think there's, like, a difference between art and reality, and, you know, 
I just like I don't get upset when people make movies that are like really edgy and kind of walk the line of like uh, that might be inappropriate I just feel like don't watch it and if you're not stable enough to like differentiate video games and books and movies from reality then just you shouldn't be playing them and watching them and you know like you shouldn't be reading these kind of books if if you're the kind of person who's going to try to turn it into reality um and then obviously long walk which was on my top hundred um i love dystopian anything so um also on my top hundred with long walk was needful things and i am a sucker for um haunted objects i don't know why this is just a thing that i'm really into it's like a very niche type of story that I really like. And Stephen King did a great job of it because not only is it haunted objects, but it's in a small town. So, like, it really works because the setting is, like, the kind of people who are in everybody's business anyway. And so the concept of, like, they're all in each other's business and now they're getting all these objects, but, like, everybody's noticing, like, changes in people's lives and situations and... I don't know. The whole thing just really worked for me. You didn't like it as much, huh? Oh, I really like it. It's great. So great again, villain, great setup, great characters. It just—it's none of all my absolute favorites. Oh. Uh, um, but I still really like it. That's sort of—I feel like—that's right up. I don't remember exactly when that came out. But that's right up around the edge of like before he falls off the cliff. Of yeah. The writing book. Well, I feel like Needful Things is one of the last really good ones he has. <laughs> and then well, it just becomes awful. The thing with Needful Things too is like it's. Um, like, it's supernatural, and, like, as you'll see with, like, I mean, if you look at the ones, like, that I really like, Bag of Bones, Salem's Lot, Regulators is a little out there, Desperation, like, the Night Shift stories I really like, Long Walk, Rage, Needful Things, all of these, and then my top two, they're all just on the edge of supernatural. Like, there's a supernatural piece, but it's not, like ridiculously over the top and that's the thing with like a lot of his stories is they get too far into the supernatural weirdness that i just like lose interest because and i'm not like totally opposed like i like bentley little and he writes like nonsense and it's like absolute nonsense like supernatural entities like elder gods kind of stuff i like some of dean Koontz's stuff and his can be really supernatural but like i feel like both of them they just don't, they don't, like, pretend it's not. You know, it's just, like, it's supernatural. It's weird and, like, not set in reality. Stephen King's, it's like, he spends a lot of time trying to establish, like, a real world, like, existence for these characters. And, like, and his writing's really good in that area. But then, like, he throws in these supernatural pieces and you're like, you had a good story. What are you doing? <laughs> you know? like, and I just feel like sometimes he's, like, Oh, I'm the horror guy. I gotta throw in some ridiculous nonsense. I'm like, no, you were had a good book. Just keep going with the book you had. You know? Yeah. Um, so my last two, so number two is The Shining. And again, speaking of barely supernatural, like this one that you asked the question, is it even supernatural? Or is it like, is he just an alcoholic? Um, you know, and I guess I'm sure Dr. Sleep is going to have more supernatural side to it. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, the Shining stuff, in, is it? Is it Billy Summers, I think? Has it, like, some Shining stuff in Oh, there? really? I think it's Billy Summers. Like, he's, like, a cross. One of his friends that he plays, he hangs out, is, like, a cross, like, this ravine from the Overlook. Oh, wow, that's barely cool. barely see it. They reference it a couple... Yeah, yeah it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's Billy Summers. Because they have a couple, like, things oh. that are in there that, are, like, don't really fit in with the rest of the plot, but are still kind of fun. He loves throwing his own stuff into his yeah, own book. Yeah, which is kind of self Grit, what's the word I want? Not grandizing. So, Promotional? No, there's a funner, more fun word that I want that I can't think of because my brain is crap and I'm dumb. But anyway, move on. All right. Um, but I know we talked about this because it was in my top 100, so I talked about it a little. But, um, yeah, I really love The Shining. I think the movie is, like, a really good movie, too, but they're just nothing alike. And so I'm like, all right. I was just saying, like, I do want to rewatch The Shining soon because... I haven't seen it all the way through since, I think, the summer before ninth grade, which is when I read the book, and I watched the movie the day after finishing the book, or, like, later the night of that I finished the book, and that is very close, so I was very particular about how everything was wrong in the movie, and so I've watched scenes of the movie since, and, like, I love Stanley Kubrick, and so I've learned to appreciate the movie, 
But I feel like I need to just watch it, like, as its own entity and, like, not even think about the book. Um, because I thought the TV movie was a little bit better in terms of, like, being um, faithful to the novel. But, I mean, obviously, like, Stanley Kubrick's just an amazing director. And Jack Nicholson's, you know, pretty good actor. And not that, like, Steven Weber's fine, but, like... How about that big wheel? Yeah, but I mean, again, like, a lot of the pieces of the movie that stand out... Are there even twins in the book? I think, yeah. Oh, there are, they're okay. They're one of the things he hallucinates. Um, oh, okay. The kid sees him, and he sees the dead girl in the tub. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, like, I can't... I sort of lose track of, like, what's movie, what's book, but... Um, yeah, I just remember... I remember this book just being, like, slow-paced, and, like, everyone's, like... Quit, people quit. I see so many people like DNF at like fifty percent. I'm like, well, the book didn't even really start till eighty, eighty percent. So I mean, it and it's, but I don't feel like it's a slow burn unnecessarily. Like it's one of those, you know, when you watch like a movie that's really, really slow, and you're kind of like, is anything gonna happen in this movie? But then it works in the end, and you're like, okay, I'm glad I sat through the whole thing. Like, that's how, like, the Blair Witch Project is. Like, a lot of people hate that movie. That movie's fun the whole time. But part of it's, that's like... not a slow burn. But it's not a scary movie until, like, the last 15 minutes, and then it's eh, terrifying. It okay, like, little, 30 no, minutes. Be like, yeah. a lot earlier than that. No, the first night sequences are creepy. It's not right, like, no. but, like, the point is, like, it's, like, kind of these irritating people just walking in the woods and, like, talking about snacks. And, like, you're, like, and losing a map. And so you're, like, what is the... Losing a map, he kicks it. Right, but you're, like, what is even the point of any of this? And then, like, by the time it builds to being terrifying, you've been so lulled into this false sense of security, and then you're just, like, oh, my God, I'm so scared. I don't know if that's a great example. I don't think that movie's a great example. Of, I think of I think it's slow, and a lot of people... I don't think it's slow at all. But I think a lot of people do find it slow and give up on it. Well, yeah. Um and The Shining, to me, is, like, similar, where, like, yeah, a lot of things don't happen, but they're happening. It's just kind of the slow unraveling. Next time um, watching Blair Witch again. Yeah, well, we definitely gotta watch that for Halloween. All right, and then the last movie, I mean, the last movie, the last book, <laughs> never seen the movie, um, is Pet Cemetery. I don't want to see this movie, because it's got a, it's got a, a cat that looks like my cat, and I don't, he's not evil. No, he's a little evil. He's not evil. He's so cute. Even, I, I took a picture of the movie for the thing, and I'm just like, oh, he's so cute. Even when he's, like, the vicious, like, killer cat from, like, that came back. He doesn't kill anyone. Well, he's vicious, though. Yeah, he's just kind of cranky. He doesn't, like, do anything. He well, just I don't... comes back as, like, dark church. Yeah, he's so cute. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't do anything. Even when he's bad, he's cute. Um, yeah. But, yeah, this... I mean, I just saw a clip from the movie, and it was, like, some little kid walking around in, like, an old man's hat, and it was creepy oh, as yeah. hell. And I was like, what is happening in this movie? I'm never messed seeing this. Up. That movie's messed up. But this book terrified the hell out of me. Like, it's not even story-wise. It's, like, my... It's not really one of my favorites, but it's just... I have... This is the book where, like, I liked a lot of Stephen King, but, like... I'm not usually very scared, except for, like, in that one, in Scepter and Boogeyman. Most Stephen King doesn't scare me at all. It has, like, minimal impact on me as far as, like, creepiness. Pet Cemetery scared me so much. I, like, I went outside, and it was, like, midday, and I was still scared. I was, like, I, I was in my room, though, mm -hmm. and it was too scary being in my house that I had to sit outside in the, like, warm sunlight because I was, like, I must get as far away from any possible, like, creepiness as possible because I was so terrified reading this book I couldn't sleep I like I mean you lent it to me or you recommended it to me I think I got it from the library or I don't remember if I borrowed it from you or if I got it from the library but the library. yeah but I you told me to read it and then you were coming to pick me up for like we were this is when we were dating and you were coming to get me and I was like I just finished that you. that book and I was so scared like it's so scary. This book is so scary. <laughs> um, the Shining is scary. It's creepy. Film's lots creepy. A lot of his books are creepy, but this book is terrifying. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Scariest <coughs> book. My favorite Stephen King. <coughs> so what do you think of my list? Your list is dumb. Thanks. Yay. 
It's fine. You don't love anything I hate, so that's good. Yeah, I don't... I at least like all the things you like. Right. At least in, like, a different places. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot I haven't read. Um, you, like, you're of the Dark Tower thing, which is, like, a whole entity that I'm not dealing with, so... You shouldn't. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do some tags. Um, so, I don't know, we'll get this up at some point. Boop. Bye. Boop.